Anyway, so Brandon Bosmo was born with a genetic condition called mosaic trisomy 18. This made learning and normal obstacles huge challenges for Brandon. But he's more than overcome all of these challenges. He's created a website to inspire hope in families worldwide. His work has earned him the Enbridge Famous Five Award, the Vimy Pilgrimage Award, and the Prada Strathcona Award. And in the near future, Brandon will be traveling to San Diego to accept the International Yes I Can Award. His TED Talk today is going to be about growing up with this diagnosis and living with it, and is going to challenge some of the notions about who is worthy of medical care and life itself. Please help me welcome Brandon. Thank you for that introduction. When I was four, there was good news and there was bad. The good news is my parents had a brand new baby boy. There I am, two pounds and 12 ounces. The bad news is I have tried mosaic trisomy 18. 70% of my cells have an extra chromosome. Unfortunately, trisomy 18 is called incompatible with life. We do not know how long your son may live. Over there, is there be more good news? I was getting cuter all the time to say, oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> and more bad news, because I'm not me, I have a very low IQ. I'm not meeting the normal milestones. I have ADD. He can't, he won't, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not what some people consider to be normal. Do these things affect me? Yes, but why let them define who I am? Absolutely not. So how do these things affect me? Well, for one thing, I did things a little differently. Instead of crawling, I did the famous log roll. I could get from one side of the room to the other side of the room in no time flat. I rolled so fast that my mom, that I rolled down the stairs twice. My mom rushed me to the May Center and says, Brandon has fallen down the stairs again. I was sure they're thinking, sure, he fell down the stairs again. Or did she just push him down the stairs. So people ask me, what happened to you? Did you fall on your head? I can say yes, actually twice. Because <laughs> of my trisomy, I'm different. I've been laughed at, whispered about. People used to say, hey, retard, or you, reject. I used to put a brave smile on my face, pretend it didn't hurt. But in fact, it felt like my heart was about to break. I got beaten up, I've been kicked, punched, spit on, when I'm crying out, help me, and no one came to help me. They're just laughing, thinking this was funny. How was this funny? It got to the point where I thought my life was worthless and no one cared, until I found the face of many other trisomic children. I heard about Amelia, Carrie, Brian, and Brooklyn Hope were all refused oxygen, left them to die in their parents' arms. Imagine if that was your brother or sister. Lawrence Grace, whose obstetrician says, your child is no longer my patient, only you are. I heard about Annie, whose parents thought the doctors were helping them, but in fact they put a DNR, do not resuscitate without the parents' knowledge nor permission. And he died. I heard about Cassia, who needed an O2 stat monitor, was, was put into a beautiful room, but without O2 stat monitor, she would have not survived. The doctor said, well, she has no quality of life. Does she look like she has no quality of life? I heard about all these children whose parents had to fight so hard that they'd get a heart operation. Lane still doesn't have a heart operation. And any other child would get one. These are just some of the doctor's comments. All Edward's babies die. That's another name for a trisomy 18. And kids do survive. Or, I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable treating your child. And he didn't. Or, this one always infuriates me. Now, let me make myself perfectly clear. I will not spend a single healthcare dollar on your child. 
Unfortunately, this is just the tip of the iceberg for many trisomy families. A world, it decides, who is worthy of medical treatment? A world where over 90% of trisomy kids are aborted. Genetic discrimination is deadly. Is my life and the lives of all these children less valuable than yours? If this is normal, I want no part. I can see these things happen. Number one, we get rid of that label, incompatible with life. What does that even mean? Do these children look like they're incompatible with life? Number two, that doctors treat children for their symptoms and not their label. Number three, doctors give balanced information. And number four, parents decide the fate of their child. Students, please stop making fun of kids like me who are different. Let us join in your games of sports or your parties or whatever you're doing on the weekends. If you see someone like me singing, sit beside me, get to know me. We could have a really lot in common. Society seems to have this idea that you need to be perfect to have a chance at life. How did this happen? We each have a difference to make in this world. I'm thankful through my website, my Facebook page, and my talks. I'm able to educate people from around the world and give hope to those who feel that there is no hope. God has given me a voice, and I will continue to use it for those who are voiceless. So please... Let's work hand in hand on redefining normal. Thanks, Brandon. That was great.